This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Super Speed Golf. If you want to hit the ball farther than you ever have before, you need to get your hands on the overspeed training that Mike and Kyle put together over at superspeedgolf.com. Use promo code GOLFSTRATEGY to get 10% off your entire order. Again, that's superspeedgolf.com, promo code GOLFSTRATEGY. Do you love to play golf? Do you wish you could be a more consistent and confident player? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Golf Strategy School podcast, where we discuss specific practice strategies used by some of the best golf instructors from around the world. Here's your host, Marty Griffin. Hey, Golf Strategy School, it's Marty back with you again, and holy crap, what an amazing Masters tournament. That was just nuts. To see Sergio and Justin Rose just go neck and neck all the way down the back nine was just amazing. I don't even have any other words for it. It's awesome. There's a lot that we could have learned from that, and there are some really, really interesting comments made in the interview at the end with Jim Nance between Stuart Hagstad, who is the low amateur finisher, and well, and Sergio as well, uh, that most people really need to listen to. But to kind of go over it kind of from front to back in terms of just at least the last round, you know, I've been a Sergio fan ever since that scissor kick at Medina. Uh, he's only a few years older than me, and I've always related to him with my game. Well, we both have tons of lag coming into the ball, which means timing is just hugely important for both of us. And he's got a fiery personality, which on the golf course, I am I can be hot-headed too. And that can lead to some very steep emotional and statistical highs and lows within a round. And I think we really saw that happen within that, that Sunday round for Sergio. You know, when he had that three-shot lead on five, everything seemed to be falling into place perfectly. But you just knew that that Justin Rose was was going to make his push, and and he did. And then all of a sudden, Sergio starts to stumble at the turn, and then everyone's talking about if he could hold on or not. And from what I had just watched, during those first three holes on the back nine, A lot of people kind of seemed like they thought he was struggling, but that showed me that he really could hold on. One of my favorite quotes comes from Craig Jones, who is the creator of Faced First Golf, and it is, don't follow a bad shot with a dumb one. And that's exactly what Sergio used to do, but he avoided on Sunday. He was grinding out pars and not giving up, even though he was making bogeys. He was smart, and he took his medicine, which was an unplayable lie, on 13. And then he was able to show his world-class skill and save that par. Really, right then and there, you could feel that momentum just surge back to his side. And this really happens all the time in golf. You just need one good shot. (laughs) Really, sometimes it's just one good bounce, and it's like this switch goes off inside of you where you know that whatever it was gave you that supreme confidence, and you know that you're going to hit every shot flush and make every swing in a committed and confident fashion. Sergio went on to keep his cool, even when he let the lead slip away again. He knew his game, which was really the thing. He had his plan, and he stuck with it. He didn't let what was happening around him influence his plan. The biggest lesson that we can really learn from Sergio coming down that back nine was to make a plan and just stick with it. There are way too many times where amateurs get one bad bounce or maybe, you know, maybe it's not a bad bounce. Maybe they legitimately made a wrong decision or made one bad swing and they decide that, you know what, it's time to scrap the entire plan for the whole round. Well, you know, they never stop to think that golf is a game of averages and there's a pretty decent chance that if they continue down the path that they had laid out ahead of time, that there will be a good bounce or a good swing or maybe like a really, really good decision that is yet to come. Now, if you think about it, I'm, I'm like a, a metaphors person. You know, what would happen if every time you felt a bump in the road, 
you pulled into an auto shop and had them check out your car. A, <laughs> you'd be dead broke. And B, you wouldn't get anywhere. You know, you have to trust your plan. You thought it out. You made it ahead of time. And you did it for a reason. So you really just got to stick with it. Really, one of the other awesome things that was in that post-tournament, I guess you would say, interview when they were getting ready to give Sergio his jacket, it was from that low amateur, Stuart Hagstad. And when he was talking with Jim Nance, Nance asked him how he did it. And Stuart said that he played within himself and made very committed golf swings. Those are two hugely important points. He played within himself, so that means he didn't try and nuke an 8-iron 210 yards, and he made very committed golf swings, meaning that whatever his plan was, he stuck with it and hit that individual shot. You know, So he stuck with his game plan, and he played great that week. And that's really what it was. You know, it, it comes down to some rather simple tactics. The other thing that I loved that he said was that bogeys won't kill you, but doubles will. That's a huge lesson for people to learn. I mean, look at a pro's scorecard. They'll go up and down, up and down, and they'll still finish up uh, under par. They might have two or three bogeys, and they'll just kind of even it out with three or four birdies. So don't scrap the plan just because you have one bogey, because it's not going to kill you. But if you scrap the plan, then you're in a free fall and you're trying to build your parachute on the way down. And that's when the doubles start rolling in. You know, these are all really important keys for solid golf, especially if you're a higher handicap player. Playing within yourself is just so important. You can't be fantasizing about that one time that you did hit your eight iron, you know, whether it was 205 or 184 yards. You know, you can't count on that outlier to be what will happen every single time. You know, if you did have that eight iron that went a mile and a half, it was probably downwind and off of a cliff. So that's not your normal game. You need to play your averages and when in doubt, especially as a high handicapper, you need to take an extra club because when you swing, it's rarely going to be perfect. So again, just play those averages. And you know, just kind of reiterating, when Stuart was talking about making committed swings, he means picking a shot that you're going to hit and sticking with that plan throughout the swing. Now, essentially, the micromanager version of what Sergio was talking about, making his plan for the day. He knew that he was going to be, he, what did he say? Uh, he could make magic on 14 and 15. And he did. So, you know, it's when, when Stuart's talking about making committed golf swings, it's just the in the moment version of what Sergio was talking about, you know, just get to 14 and 15 and he knows that he can do well on those holes. And that was his plan. Well, Stuart was saying, he's like, you know what? This is my club. I know I can hit it. Just hit it. It can be harder to do than you think, but with the right kind of practice, it can be made a a foundational and should be made a foundational part of your game. You know, we always like to talk about what practice drills to do on this podcast. And for my money, if you want to talk about commitment, Two drills. There's the Think Box Play Box from Lynn and Pia at Vision 54. I think that's probably the best way to put this committed in the moment swing into your game. If you're struggling with it at that level, then I would go to Dave Heinen's recommendation of the seven second drill. So that's that's another real quick, short drill. It doesn't take a lot, but it can be a huge change in how your game works going forward. So uh, next big major tournament is the U.S. Open, I believe. And that's right in my backyard up here in Wisconsin. So I am thoroughly excited for that. Uh, My eight-year-old daughter wants to go with. And uh, hell if I should say no to her for that. But if you want more information, uh, if you want to check out the different types of practice routines that I've put together for the podcast in the past, head back to the website, which is golfstrategyschool.com. And as always, I will catch you in the short grass. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Golf Strategy School podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the Golf Strategy Academy, visit golfstrategyschool.com slash membership dash info.